In the last video, we looked at electrophilic aromatic substitutions of monosubstituted benzenes. If we want to synthesize a product containing three or more substituents located on an aromatic ring, however, we need to worry about directing effects in disubstituted benzenes, which already contain two R groups, possibly the same, possibly different, connected to an aromatic ring. And the question here again is about site selectivity. How will the R groups direct substitution to particular positions within the aromatic ring? Some of these cases are simpler than others, and we're going to look at both simple and complex cases in this video. And this is one case where it generally is going to benefit you to do careful analysis rather than relying on intuition or intuitive rules. By carefully analyzing, for example, the influence of one R group and where it's directing and then looking at the influence of the other R group and where it's directing and comparing the two, you'll be able to identify positions that are directed to by both R groups which are likely to react, and you'll be able to more carefully judge the relative likelihood of positions that may be directed to by one or the other of the substituents. When you're trying to predict the product of electrophilic aromatic substitution of a disubstituted benzene, the first thing you should do is assess the positions that are directed to by the two substituents. And the main thing you want to look for are what I call reinforced positions. Unsubstituted positions that are directed to by both substituents. Here's an example of a substrate containing two nitro groups in a meta relationship. And what I'm going to do is highlight the two in different colors and highlight in the same color the positions within the aromatic ring that these groups direct to. For example, if we start with the blue nitro group, we see that it's a meta director, and so it directs to the positions meta to itself. However, this first position I highlighted is already substituted with another group, and so we can forget about that one. Really, the only position that this NO2 group can direct to is this position here. If we now turn our attention to the red NO2 group, we see that it directs to positions that are meta to itself as well, here and here. But once again, that first position already bears a substituent, and so we don't have to worry about it reacting in EAS. And what we find is that both the red and the blue nitro groups are directing to the same position. And in fact, there's only one of these. This is what I call a reinforced position. Electrophilic aromatic substitution at this position is reinforced by both substituents. It's very clear then in this case that the only option for substitution is that highlighted position, which is meta to both of the meta-directing substituents in the substrate, both of the two NO2 groups that are already present within the substrate. Just a brief note on these reaction conditions, NO2 plus BF4 minus is a salt that supplies the NO2 plus cation directly. This is needed because this starting material is extremely deactivated toward electrophilic aromatic substitution because it's extremely electron poor. In the second case, we also observe reinforced positions. And let's once again treat the two substituents separately and then see how their directing effects overlap. The methyl group is an ortho-para director and so will direct to positions ortho and para to itself. There already is a substituent para to the CH3 group, so I'm going to leave that unhighlighted. By now, we're quite used to the NO2 group as a meta director, and this is going to direct meta to itself at these two positions. And so once again, we see the CH3 and the NO2 substituents directing to the same positions. Both of these positions are reinforced. And in fact, it doesn't matter which position we substitute at, as the, those two positions are homotopic. In the major product, we find the new NO2 group meta to the meta director, the NO2 group that was in the original substrate, and ortho to the ortho para director in the original substrate, located at a reinforced position. In more complex cases, we may observe that multiple positions are activated by the two substituents, and multiple different positions. And so we need to judge the relative directing power, quote unquote, of the two different substituents. And this comes down to two effects. Steric effects, which will tend to slow down substitution, for example, ortho to a sterically bulky group. And electronic effects, which have to do with the donating or withdrawing strengths of the two different substituents, as measured, for example, by their Hammett constants, by sigma p. Let's consider this example first. We've got two alkyl groups in this substrate in a para relationship to each other and they're both ortho-para directing groups, but because their para positions are occupied, they can only direct ortho to themselves. Because of the way they're oriented, 
the isopropyl and methyl groups direct to two distinct sets of positions. But because the two positions highlighted blue and the two positions highlighted red are homotopic with respect to each other, we really only need to consider one of these two. Generally speaking, because the alkyl groups are, are of comparable donating strength, on an electronic basis we should expect a mixture of the two possible products, some resulting from substitution ortho to the isopropyl group and some resulting from substitution ortho to the methyl group. To decide which of these products is the major product, we should really think about the difference between these two molecules and stability. And one thing to notice is that there's more hindrance in the product in which the new acyl group is located ortho to the isopropyl group, which is more sterically bulky, than there is in the product in which the new acyl group is located ortho to the methyl group, which is smaller. On a steric basis, then, we should expect this product on the right to be the major product because it's less hindered, and the product on the left to be the minor product. And indeed, this is exactly what is observed. The key idea here in general is a steric effect. As the two donating groups are of comparable strength electronically, but they have very different steric environments at their ortho positions. In the second case, we have two electron donating groups located again in para positions with respect to each other. But now they're very different. One is a hydroxyl group and the other is a CH3 group. Once again, we have a situation where the two donating groups are donating to distinct positions. The position ortho to the hydroxyl group is distinct from the position ortho to the CH3 group. Here, to decide the major product, the thing to notice is that the hydroxyl group is a stronger electron donor or electron donating group than the CH3 group is. This means that we should expect it to exert a stronger electronic influence over the favored position. In other words, the electron density ortho to the hydroxyl group is greater than the electron density ortho to the methyl group. For this reason, we should expect the major product to be the one derived from substitution at the position ortho to the hydroxyl group rather than ortho to the methyl group. The stronger electron donating power of hydroxyl relative to CH3 leads to this outcome. And this is primarily what we call an electronic effect. It has to do with the electron donating strength of the two groups, their relative strength, and the resulting effect on the distribution of electron density within the ring. There's more electron density ortho to the hydroxyl than there is ortho to the methyl.